It's time. Well, hey guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, it's beginning, uh, 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 getting pretty close to the release of Fire Emblem Awakening. I'm a little excited. I'm also a little tired, so if I get a little ranty, well, this is a rant video, so you can't really complain. Anyway, so getting pretty close to the release of Fire Emblem Awakening, uh, time for another rant. This week, uh, we're gonna talk about strategy. Well, not exactly, but I'll get into that in a minute. Before we do that, I want to talk about uh, why I'm doing this. First and foremost, I it's supposed to be information informatical, mm -hmm. uh, informative. So if you guys um, have any questions or uh, post them in the comments, I'll, I'll answer them as best I can. If you have any criticisms, tell me. Just don't be a troll. I don't like trolls. Uh, second, I'm here to entertain you. So if they're boring, tell me that too. But again, seriously, keep it kind. And uh, three, I'm here to discuss things with you. So yeah, like I said, um, we're, we're here to uh, be a Fire Emblem community, buy games and play them and then talk about them. I mean, that's, that's what YouTube's about, right? And, well, and other stuff, but those things a lot in particular. So anyway, guys, uh, Anyway, let's get on to our next topic. So our first major topic today, I wanted to make clarify something I pointed out in the strategy and tactics discussion earlier. Um, I, I said that I, I might have said something about there being strategy in Fire Emblem. Well, there isn't. Not exactly. Uh, Fire Emblem has strategy and it has tactics, but there are no, there is no strategy in the battles. Let me say that again, just to make sure you understood that. There is no strategy in Fire Emblem Combat. All of the strategy comes from outside sources. So, like, all the choices in battle, like who you're going to attack, who you're going to kill, you know, how you position your units, that's all tactics. All of it. So, since Fire Emblem doesn't have any, like, way to move your army around and position it to kill, like, the enemy troops, and I'm, like, making a flanking motion with my hand, but... And you can't do that. It's just like battle, battle, battle. Even in Sacred Stones, where you can like skirmish guys, that's not strategy. That's just fighting extra guys. It doesn't change anything. The strategy in Fire Emblem comes, strangely enough, from leveling up. You know, it's choosing who you want to give your experience to. That is a strategic decision because it affects the outcome of your units in the long run. Of course, that also affects your tactics because, you know, if you decide you're going to use this little sword mask, this, I'm sorry, this little Myrmidon or a thief, you're going to have to work your tactics a little bit to make sure that you can fit that into your overall battle plan, but it's most, but it's first and foremost a strategic decision. So, you know, while you might, you know, <laughs> basically you can say, yes, I'm going to use this thief, but is it a tactical decision or a strategic decision? Are you using him because you know eventually he's going to become a badass assassin and like be able to Oko stuff? That's a strategic decision, and you're using him to level up into an assassin. But if you're using him simply because you need a sword using unit to kill that axe boss, that's a tactics move thing. So anyway, sorry, I just wanted to clarify that a little bit of information. Um, I, oh, by the way, one other thing that could be a strategic decision in Fire Emblem is uh, like if there's a branching path, like in Sacred Stones, you can choose whether to go on Erica's route, route or Ephraim's route. That's a strategic decision because it affects the next like five battles. So it's pretty important and not a tactical decision at all. Obviously strategic. So um, yeah, let's uh, we're now we're gonna start talking about uh, the strategy or really tactics in Fire Emblem because I could talk about the strategy, but that'd be just telling you which units are good, and you don't need me to tell you that. I mean if just Google it, really. Glasses adjust. So, um, <laughs> tactics and fire ammo, very important, super important. It's how you win, it's how you get good. Now, let me share with you the golden rule of fire ammo tactics a good offense is a dead team. <laughs> In other words, play defensively, like always. I, I can't, there's only, like, 
one situation that I can think of where you want to be offensive, and that's when there's an uh, there's a treasure chest and a thief's going to get it and run away, and that's the only time I would ever play offensively because you need whatever's in that chest, obviously, because otherwise we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Come on. So, otherwise, though, you want to play defensively. Why? Because you can most enemies, many many enemies, will either. <laughs> Sorry, let me explain. Two kinds of enemies in this game. No, there's three. I'm just gonna be inconsistent. Screw with you guys. <laughs> okay, three kinds of enemies. Enemies that charge towards you in like a horde and they're evil and scary. Enemies that will stay still until you move within their range and then they will attack, come, move and attack you. And then there are enemies who never move. And those are the quite possibly the most dangerous, believe it or not, because you don't know if they're going to move or not. And sometimes an enemy, you'll move into the range thinking they're not going to move, and then they do, and then they screw with you. So I guess actually the second type is the most dangerous, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, let all the ones that want to charge you, charge you, and form like a little, uh, a little blockade, a little wall defense. With your strongest defense units, line up some range attackers behind them and pound the crap out of them. It's also a great way to level up your lower leveled units by like sticking them in the back row and just pounding them from far. I mean, like almost every class has access to a ranged weapon, so make use of it. It's pretty, it's pretty effective if, to level up your units when the enemies can't counter attack. Anyway, so that's the best way to take care of those units. Then for the next round of units, the ones that you have to lure out, there's a lot of these, so. You know, just be prepared for it. Um, the, these are also great to level up your noob units because you can just lure them out by... Um, assuming your noob unit can take at least one hit from these guys. Make sure to check the math. Make sure you're okay. But assuming they can take one hit, you can just move them within range of one person and then they just fight it out, heal the guy, keep going. You're fine. Anyway, lure guys out one at a time, maybe two or three if you're feeling bold, and, you know, just slowly eke your way through the level, and then you'll win. That's how you win Fire Emblem. The bosses are different, though. The bosses who almost always stay in place, about maybe one in four, maybe one in five move, but mostly they stay in place. And these are great for, like, grinding experience, grinding weapon levels by like attacking them over and over again. You'll get like some experience for hitting them and you'll get weapon experience to help you get higher ranks in your weapons. So this is a great time to grind. One time when I was playing Lin's hard mode in Reckon o Ken, I, I actually managed to grind uh, Sane, a cavalier, up to 20th level and then promote him with a knight crest you're supposed to use on a different unit, um, I, it, like a knight or something like that. I managed to promote him at 20th level in the prologue of the game, <laughs> just by grinding him on the final boss, just attack him over and over and over and over and over again, letting him heal, because the boss automatically heals, because he's on a castle space, which means he automatically heals, I keep on healing my unit, and just keep on having him fight over and over and over again. It's a pain in the butt, but it was so worth it in Hector's hard mode to have a promoted unit at like levels 15, at like chapter 15. It was so, so helpful. I highly recommend it. Um, then again, I don't because it sucked. It sucked so badly. Oh, I mean, to make him, not to use him. <laughs> Using him was fun. Did that sound weird? Eh. Anyway, so, uh, switching hands again. Oh, man, glasses adjust. Can that be my signature? Uh, it's kind of cheesy, but we'll go with it for now. <laughs> the glasses adjusting guy. Let's talk a little bit about healers. They're a very controversial type of unit, as many players prefer to just use healing items as opposed to wasting a whole slot on these units that only heal from their first promotion. Yes, I, I would like to point out that once they're promoted, they do get to attack, and they're usually quite good, but that's beside the point. At the first tier is when most people have trouble using them, because all they can do is heal, they can't attack, and they can't defend themselves unless they're you know, like, you're playing Radiant Dawn, and they can, like, whack enemies with their stabs, which does, like, no damage anyway, so... <sighs> Basically, yeah, they're they're helpless. Now, 
the big argument against them is that they're basically a walking vulnerary. They um, just yeah, like heal some HP, they're wasting unit slot, blah, 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 blah. But they're much more than that, and it's important to realize the differences. For one, they allow your other units to attack strategically whenever you need them to because they're not having to heal themselves every opportunity because, 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 because you have a healer to do it for them. And that's really important. It's really important. And I cannot stress how much that is important because especially like late in, a bat, late in the game when you're like fighting bosses that can kill you in two hits, it's super important to have healers. Now, I know most mages get the ability to use stabs when they promote, so maybe this isn't a good argument, but even still, it seems like it's really important to be able to use stabs against certain bosses and in certain areas all the time. Okay, so furthermore, beyond that, healers also heal more than a vulnerary by a good amount. Whatever their magic is, plus 10, is the amount they'll heal, and that's significantly more than just the vulnerary's 10 HP. If you're playing Radiant Dawn, my argument is again moot because <laughs> Radiant Dawn is the best healing item system in the game with tons of options and you never really have to use healers at all. In every other game though, they're very important <laughs> because they allow you to heal a bunch of HP for much less than it would cost to get a vulnerable. Vulnerabilities and heal staffs cost roughly the same, maybe heal staff costs a little bit more, but you get like 10, you get literally 10 times more uses out of it and you know, it helps level up a unit, which then you can use later on for combat. Okay, so, um, very important stuff. I, what I like to do is whenever a unit is wounded at all, I will heal them. Just instantly go, pff, pff, heal them. Or at the end of the battle, if there's a bunch of, the bunch of, a uh, bunch of, like, my wounded units, and there's just, like, one boss, or I have to seize it, I will go around and heal all my units just to get the extra, like, 100 XP, something like that. I mean, it's a free level up for your unit. I mean, it's, it's free experience, and it's, expe it's especially helpful in modes like Hector's Hard Mode and uh, Ray and Dawn Hard Mode, where you can we only get a limited number of experience points for battle, and you have limited bonus experience and stuff like that. So any extra experience you can glean for your units is super, super helpful, which is also why I use Micaiah's Sacrifice ability, which gives her 10 free experience. Anyway, it, uh, but <laughs> it's super cheap because I can then sacrifice to give you heal unit, get her 10 experience, and then he use my healer to heal her. So I'm really getting like 20 experience every, every time I heal a unit. It's a pretty sweet deal. Okay, so anyway, uh, I like to use healers for that reason. I, I, I can't really play a fire emblem game without using a healer. I haven't done it, and the only game I would even consider it in is Radiant Dawn, and... That game's hard enough as it is. I don't want to try playing without a healer. Uh, on hard mode. On, in normal, it's pretty easy because of the battle save feature. Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit more about the tactics in Fire Emblem. There's basically two big tactics you want to use. I've already gone over the one. It's defending. Defend yourself from making a wall of blockers that can protect your units. It's important always you can should let the units come to you instead of going to them, stuff like that, you know, that's that's normal, but there is a seriously huge exception to that. And that is when there are dangerous units. And what I mean by dangerous is units that can kill one of your guys in one, maybe two hits. And those guys, it's good to be aggressive with, because if you can kill them, you have no chance of anyone dying. I mean, if you have, like, one Pegasus Knight, and you and there's the enemies have a bunch of like mages and then an archer. If you charge into that area with a like a javelin or something and kill the archer from close dis from close range, then your Pegasus Knight's home free and can just farm all the experience from the mages. On the other hand, if you wait and let them come to you, they're going to come in and you're not gonna have control over which ones attack you and then she may very well die. So it is important to be aggressive sometimes, but only, only when there are dangerous units. And that can happen a lot, actually. Now, after that whole spiel, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, bosses are the most powerful and the most dangerous units on any given chapter. Shouldn't I be really aggressive with them, too? Well, that's where you would be wrong. Or, rather, that's where I would be wrong, because I was the one 
pretending that you were thinking that when you were all probably thinking, how much longer till this video is over? Am I right? Anyway, so <laughs> bosses are not the best units to rush because most of them stay put. Not all of them, some of them move, and those are the dangerous ones, and there's usually no theory to knowing whether a boss is going to move or not. For example, I'm on the final boss fight of Sacred Stones against the Demon King Fumortis. It's really, really easy, actually, you just charge in with like a frame and pound the crap out of him, but <sighs> I didn't know that he moved. And he moved around and O-code my mage. And that was awful. It was just a horrible, like, gut-wrenching experience. Because I was like, oh, come on. I didn't know he moved. Which means I had to start, like, more or less two levels over. Which is pretty annoying. Anyway, so... Uh, knowing if a boss moves or not is very important. But in general, I would say bosses you can play defensive with. Like, almost always. It's... You don't need to charge in, you don't need to kill them really fast because they're not going to do anything silly. But, you know, sometimes they will, and there's no, no way to know that until you play the level ones, unfortunately. Anyway, so, basically, with a boss, you want to walk up to it and let it attack you. This seems like a strange option. You usually want to attack the enemies, but in this case, if you attack the boss and he lives, and then he attacks you back on the next turn... He'll have a chance to deal two hits, or maybe four if he can double attack you, and that can be deadly for a lot of units, you know, if it's a tough boss. So, I would personally recommend usually just put it, leaving your unit next to him as the only possible unit to for him to attack, and then have it let him attack you, and then you can attack him back on the next turn. And this is an even better strategy, because often he, bosses will heal on their, on the, when the beginning of their turn, so... If they attack after they would they would heal, you know, then they won't have the opportunity to, and it's easier to just kill them in two rounds. Or you can charge in with a bunch of other units on the second turn and then finish them off that way. Either way, um, many strategies work for bosses, and it just depends on what you're doing. <laughs> Another cheap trick is if bosses don't have a ranged weapon, you can just troll them with an archer or a mage or something and just kill them that way. I mean, even weirder bosses like uh, the dragons and crap in Sacred Stones, they only have range 2, so you can actually, um, certain ones don't move, and you can just use your archer's longbow, which is for some reason super effective against dragons, um, to just crit the crap out of them and just kill them from long range. And anyway, that's, that's, that's one of the best ways to kill bosses when they can't counterattack, so on and so forth. I'm not going to go into farming bosses for experience and weapon levels and crap right now because that's a whole nother topic. I'll make a whole farming rant some other day, but uh, for now, that'll uh, just about do it, guys. Uh, thank you for watching Zephyr Games, and stay tuned for more Fire Emblem content as the Awakening release approaches. See you later.